Hello and welcome to an Outlook discussion on the cover story. We have Chinki Sina joining us uh, from Goa, who she's currently in Goa, and we have Snigdendu Bhattacharya from Calcutta and Ashtosh Bharadwaj from here in Delhi. Thanks very much. Uh, so Chinki, as uh, always a little bit about why we are doing the cover, what is it about it, uh, I mean, to set the tone, it is about political cadres, the, the foot soldiers of political parties who actually, you know, make or break an election in, 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 in many ways. So it is about them, you know, uh, it's a look at how certain political parties, uh, there is a new zeal in the cadre, you know, there is, uh, there are a lot of people coming in, like for instance, AAP, uh, even the RSS for that matter. And in other other cases where you know it is disintegrating, uh, you know the strong cadre base of the left, for instance, or even of the Congress, uh, how that is you know weakening over over the have, has weakened over the years. So they, we are looking at various aspects uh, of the cadres. Just to line that you know uh, you know many years ago, and I said it that time also that I had gone to a lecture of this uh, Tariq Hachil. And he talked about this fascinating lecture about uh, cadre systems of various political parties and he talked about how the BJP is so organized in the RSS cadres and they go to these nowhere places and like let's say we'll establish a school and on the ground it's not really about religion, religion per se, but it's basic things like Russian card, you know, like a widow pension, you know, they, they, this is how they build it. And it was quite fa fascinating that he said that the only cadre that came close to kind of compete with the RSS one was the BSP. And from then on, you know, we've been thinking about it. And after this election, I think a lot of people said that the BJP managed to win uh, because of the strong cadre, because they have been in touch with the ground, uh, you know, the, the people and they, they know, they understand people. And if you look at the presence of RSS everywhere, it's quite striking in the sense that they, they I mean, I was in Nagaland, I saw them there in Meghalaya, you know, everywhere. Yeah. And, um, Obviously, in a, system, in a country like India, where the health and education system are pretty much broken and implementation doesn't really work, it leaves a huge space for these ground carders to kind of fill in that space and come up with, like, you know, they, they build their uh, loyal thing, right, in the sense that they will build up a following and we traveled with a lot of these fringe parties also before, like Hindu, Yuva, Vaini and on the ground, you know, I, I travel with them and they are talking about, uh, you know, pension card, bana hai ki nahi, ya fir ration card, aapka ration aya hai ki nahi. And those are the things I think were very important for us to kind of point out. You know, as most of the stories uh, in, the, in the magazine uh, sort of reflect, uh, it is actually the carders who get the work done, you know, to the yes. for the voter. It could be a small thing like a gas connection. I mean, it's not a small thing for them. Uh, yeah. It's quite a big thing when it, you know, when we get a gas connection in a remote area, for instance, or, uh, you know, to get a road uh, sort of diverted to their village or a train to stop in their station, you know, it's it's actually the carders, you know, from the, the, the main leaders, it trickles down and it is the carders who are in touch with the voters in many cases. As uh, uh, Ashtosh Bharadwaj's story points out, which is about the RSS and, you know, the strong... Yeah. Uh, you know, the cadre base that they have, and it's only going, I mean, it's only getting strengthened uh, every passing day. That's correct, Ashtosh? Yeah, exactly. Somehow we tend to associate RSS with only one tendency, that is the Hindutva, which is there, fine. But also note that they have some 50, 60 affiliated organizations that are working in almost every spectrum of human and social life. They are working for ex-army men, they are working for uh, healthcare, uh, they have schools, you know, in 1952, the first Saraswati Shishu Mandir was established. 1952. So now Saraswati Shishu Mandir has such a strong and huge chain across the country. So, th so these are the schools that will uh, uh, invariably uh, give them their own swam savers in the later years. And also, more importantly, that will also provide a firm base for the BJP voters as well. So this is how the RSS machinery is working. On one hand, we tend to believe that they are only doing Hunduka, which is fine, but they are also doing a lot of other things during earthquakes, during uh, famines, and yeah. this is what eventually shows in their bulging numbers. In uh, in contrast, as uh, we have uh, you know the left cadre, you know which used to be so so strong at one time. Uh, I mean, you know, if there was a really a cadre based party, it was the left. Uh, there were the left parties. And uh, how they have disintegrated, I mean, you know, it's kind of weakened and how they have lost their steam um, over, the, over the last few years, particularly, uh, if you, uh, which is what your story also talks about. In fact, uh, it refers to this one particular gentleman 
uh, who's been uh, the CPIM cadre, who's a who's a seventy year old man, and he's always been. And it's, it's a very nice, it's a great way to say, you know say the story. Yeah, actually, there there are a, a couple of things I would like to connect from what Shinki said and what Ashuto said. Uh, Shinki was speaking of Tariq Kachil's uh, uh, speech where uh, he was referring to BSP's similarity with RSS probably. Uh, and now Ashutosh just right, pointed out that it, RSS is it's not about Hindutva. They have so many organizations. Uh, they have nearly 50 affiliated organizations and they are affiliated in many ways. Uh, I mean, uh, they are uh, sub-affiliated, you can say, in many cases. So uh, to my understanding, uh, I wrote two books. One was of, the first one was the left. The second was on the RSS and BJP. And what I found that if there is any similarity of RSS's ways of operation, that's only with the leftist parties. The way they build the mass organizations, the way they build organization in remote areas, uh, the kind of ideological commitment that we can see in the cadres and the structural way uh, of how to build an organization from the bottom to the top, the only explanation, ex uh, similarity I find is between the left and the RSS. Right. The, every other party in, are in the middle path. They are, they, 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 they are somehow, they can be called mass-based parties, uh, where the kind of, uh, the cadre-based parties, for, for which parties should be called cadre-based parties? Every party has supporter, but supporter and cadre are not the same. So yeah. cadres are part of a disciplined unit, uh, uh, which is uh, acting as the liaison between the masses and the leadership of a party. And so these cadres, they have to be part of a disciplined unit. Like if a, if a left cadre who's so committed for so many years, you know, and he's been like, you know, devoted his life to their ideology and their way of thinking and their, you know, their, their way of doing work. How is it that it took so little time, you know, for it to uh, completely disintegrate and, uh, you know, many of them joining the extreme, I mean, you know, the joining completely going the other side to the right. I mean, you yeah, know, many of them joined a, the TMC, many of them joined the BJP. It's a fantastic story. I mean, the, uh, the ones who joined TMC is a different thing. I mean, of course, they are, uh, may, most, many of them were not part of cadre base. They were supporters. So, for CPIM, for party left parties like CPIM, if we want to point out cadres, we should look at members who are party members who hold the card, not just a general supporter, but who are part of the party. I mean, um, who holds a membership card. So if we look at that kind of thing, then we won't see many of them join TMC, but many of them switch their votes to BJP. Why? Let me give you one short example. Taherpur is a small municipal town in Nadia district. So in uh, 2015, uh, uh, the uh, civic poll that we had, there were only two municipalities in West Bengal that the left one. One was in Siliguri, North Bengal, the other was in Tahir. In 2019, ahead of the Lok Sabha election, in, uh, it comes within Ranaghat Lok Sabha. Uh, so the BJP uh, scheduled a meeting of PM Modi in Tahirpur. And so I was uh, intrigued that uh, if the BJP was like in, in Ranaghat Lok Sabha, the BJP was likely to get fewer votes uh, uh, in Tahirpur compared to other areas because Tahirpur was still a left dominated area. So when I went to Tahirpur and met the people who came to attend Modi's rally, there I found out hordes of left supporters. And I asked them, so why are you, have you all come to Modi's rally? Your leaders, uh, Mr. Yechuri and Mr. Karat are, have been slamming Modi uh, night and morning every day. So uh, why? And they gave a simple action. See, we haven't changed our allegiance. We are determined to throw out the TMC. Right now, we are weak. Hmm. If the BJP wins, the TMC will uh, take a step back. If the TMC wins the Lok Sabha election, they will grab our municipality. Hmm. And if BJP wins, TMC won't touch our municipality. And this is exactly what has happened this time. Now that in 2021, TMC has again come back to power. And again, the civic polls happened this year. And Tahirpur has even gone to CPM. Left has okay. again owned Tahirpur. But in 2019, in Tahirpur area, all votes went to BJP.
Chinki, the other interesting thing that we've been discussing, you know, this AAP, you know, it's it's I think the youngest and the fastest growing party in India right now. Um, and they, I mean, they've done spectacularly in Punjab. In fact, in Goa too, as you were saying, when you were there during the elections there. No, even uh, now actually. I've yeah, they did do a serious attempt. I mean, there was a, a, maybe not this time, but they have made inroads. So, you know, their card of building uh, is in, uh, again, it's at, it's at uh, breakneck speed right now. And they're going to Gujarat, Himachal. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll speak about that to Ashtosh a little later. But Goa particularly, you know, the kind of things that you saw, how AAP gets their card of going. Yeah, no, I wanted to come in here. It's not basically about uh, which card or and that card. It's, it's basically the cover story is looking at this whole card of building thing and how they have evolved over time in terms of right. like, let's say when AAP comes to Goa, it also like, you know, I think one of the biggest uh, uh, mishaps that happened that they said that oh, we'll take everybody to Ayodhya if AAP wins over here. And, uh, uh, you know, they, co they corrected it immediately because yeah. their card has told them that this is not going to work out. You know, and I have, I know a couple of people who are in the cadres over here who are working with like, you know, AAP and TMC and their modus operandi was very different. So AAP here has a lot of these um, interesting uh, people who belong to that intellectual kind of a mix, you know, and some of them have left up, right? Uh, because they also got uh, kind of like divided between with, with all this confusion that happened. So AAP is quite interesting and they have been working in Goa for a long, long time. Now, coming back to the other point, I wanted to make two, three points here that, you know, when Ashutosh talks about this RSS, it's very interesting to see because many years ago, we had been covering this Saraswati, um, you know, these schools that the RSS builds. And for the longest time, the RSS was against uh, English, uh, uh, you know, language. It was uh, coming from that Loya thing or whatever. And then suddenly they realize that this is how the RSS changes, you know, like their carders inform them and they are on the ground, they understand. So there were all this mushrooming of private schools, uh, which were, uh, you know, giving this English thing. Suddenly, RSS decides to teach English, which was quite, quite a departure from what they had been yeah. doing earlier. And that's very interesting to look at, okay? Again, yeah. the CPI, ML in Bihar, for instance, coming to the left, you know, in the last elections, you know, and I was there and, uh, you know, I spoke to all the, uh, all the people over there. They suddenly stopped talking about land reform because land reform was not going to work. So, in a way, you also understand, like, how the carders are kind of, Either they are reconciling the old carter to the new reality or whatever the new alliances, because after that Chandrasekhar thing, you know, there was no possibility of RJT and CPIML coming together. And in Bihar, the CPIM did not perform very well, but the ML, which has a very, very strong carter based party over there, they realized that if they continue to harp on that land reform, which was never going to be implemented in Bihar, although True. Bihar was the first uh, state to talk about it, they understood quickly. Yeah. But they also say that our carders are committed to this land reform and right. we'll find a way to do it. Right. And coming, yeah, so that also kind of, you know, it's, it's not, also Shiv Sena, for instance, when we asked Haima to do the story, we, through some conversations, we had heard that it would be very interesting to look at the shakhas of Shiv Sena and the old guard. Now, they are not able to reconcile to the new Shiv Sena in terms of their uh, uh, new politics. You know, this, uh, I, I remember, I mean, I, I, I hope all of all the people remember that there was a time when the Shiv Sena was completely against the outsiders, you know, like um, uh, the Biharis and the UP migrants were there. And suddenly, you know, there is this new Shiv Sena, which is completely reconfigured. And there is a whole, this Kada thing, you know, yeah. the old Kada, the new Kada, the old Kada is still reconciling, understanding. So the issue actually looks at all of this. It's not about, you know, the RSS having a better Kada or BSP having a better Kada or all. CPIM yeah. having yeah. Card. Whichever party the card is nimble, as you, as you were saying, you know, if RSS figures out that, okay, in this place, English is what is going to yeah. work, you know, or if uh, Shiv Sena figures out that at this place, outsider hating or those kind of uh, you know, slogans are not going to work, you know, so they quickly change. But, you know, as Manish Tiwari also writes in the magazine, the one party which has not been able to uh, be so <laughs> nimble, you know, which was actually a card based party at, at one stage is the Congress Ashtosh. You know, if coming to that, they, they, you know, it seems like they don't respond to, uh, you know, the, the information that comes, uh, you know, up from the ground. You know, they are, uh, they, do, uh, they don't react fast enough, you know, and by the time they realize it's too late, you know, it's, and so their you know, cardo base is eroded. And, you know, as somebody was saying, now it's Congress is almost uh, what is called a franchise party. You know, it's this uh, really hardly any cardo base. 
several uh, years before i spoke to former chatisgarh chief minister ajit jogi he was the congress chief minister so i asked him that why uh, the perennial question that why do you continue with rahul gandhi and sonia gandhi even though they have been not been able to deliver any success so he said we also want them out now that person now he is dead he is no more but we do not know whether we would be able to handle the succession battle which may and immediately begin in their absence so no, see ashtosh no sorry to interrupt sorry to, see that is one question i'm not no, talking about i am talking about the cadres wait what i am saying <laughs> that the reason for the erosion of congress cadre base is that their leadership is unable to infuse any inspiration they are ground people they are ground cadres they are thoroughly disillusioned with their leadership so it's not that the congress values have disappeared like we are saying the rss has been able to it's not just about the hindutva as, as i said in the beginning the rss journey is not merely about the hindutva it's about its ground level presence presence but why the congress is withering away at the ground because they are people on the ground have thoroughly lost hopes in their leadership yeah and they i, I think yeah and i think they are not really able to respond to the information and you know the, the what the worker wants what the cadre wants they exactly. just... that's what i am saying the ground level worker they are thoroughly disillusioned and disappointed so just imagine if your ground level if your so foot soldier if a foot soldier repeatedly believes that his or her voice is not being listened at the top level then they will gradually start switching over to other places this is how i see Uh, yeah. the erosion in the congress space and then the congress has also made some uh, wrong decisions in the past for instance recently uh, take the the up example they decided to go it solo without having any base uh, and they invested huge resources there in in the Cong uh, in up so all these things have led to the erosion of the congress base you know uh, uh, snignendu you were talking about uh, how uh, you know committed left cadre or a supporter or a voter would even not i mean would even go to the bjp if they can defeat the tmc what about uh, you know how is maya how is the tmc itself i mean how has mamta sort of you know how does she you know how you know does the information trickle down properly how does she sort of enthuse the cadres um, is she a cadre based uh, leader i mean is she like uh, does she do uh, you know uh, sort of do meetings with them often travel a lot no the, uh, initially also i was trying to differentiate between cadre based parties and mass based parties so tmc isn't a cadre based party a yeah. cadre based party will have certain discipline i mean uh, like the like in the bjp or in the cpim or in the cpi ml you will have internal elections after a stipulated time and and the leadership will be determined by the elections to a great extent Uh, I mean, uh, at least from the bottom when the elections start. So, this is a very crucial differ the difference in TMC. It's a one-man party. It's a one-woman party. So, in this one-woman party, whatever the party leader decides, impromptu is the rule. I mean, there have been many cases where they have said that a leader has been suspended or a leader has been uh, has been expelled from the party. now no one really knows i mean because when we uh, ask those leaders uh, these expelled leaders or suspended leaders so what did the party write to you uh, in most cases they don't even receive a letter the cm has said it the party yeah. chief has said it and that's the final verdict and so the letter may reach one month later it may not reach at all and uh, whether one receives it or not receives it doesn't matter if the party chief has said that he is not part of the party then he is not part of the party and yeah. the meetings and other things they do take place at the ground level the tmc has tried to create a structure uh, kind of emulating left at the ground level uh, but even that structure is not i mean uh, they, they don't function the way the left structures function in a disciplined right. way Uh, but now that they are in power for uh, more than a decade now there has been certain structural uh, especially after prashant kishore's intervention in 2019 uh, some structural discipline can be seen in the tmc otherwise there was nothing there is another interesting point that we will find in rss and in the left uh, cadres uh, taking up responsibilities uh, of party or organization going 
way uh, out of their areas say in in bengal one of the pioneers of a uh, building rss organization is keshavrao dikshit who came to bengal from maharashtra in 1950 so it's 72 years now and keshavrao dikshit is still alive he lives in the rss headquarters in kolkata keshav bhavan uh, he has no family and in 1950 he was sent from nagpur to build organization in bengal and he spent some years in kolkata then moved to another district to build organization there and for 52 years bengal is his home just like mm. in tripura yeah. left leaders from bengal build the communist party in the 1940s and 1950s and even in 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 punjab we will find some left leaders from southern india and from eastern india went to co to collaborate with the local uh, punjabi uh, leftist uh, people of 1920s and 30s who had those gadar party connections to build the communist party in undivided punjab during the 1920s and 30s so in left parties and in the rss we have this culture in meghalaya yeah. you you will find someone from uh, southern india building the rss base for the past 30 years that's but true. in from in other parties you won't find that kind yeah. of dedication yeah. when in a remote village uh, yeah. with nothing maybe a sundarban island or maybe an andam island in andaman yeah. you can find an rss volunteer who is from northern india or a communist volunteer That's true. who maybe yeah. from yeah but not of congress yeah. not of bsp not of any other party yeah there is a lot to read in the magazine uh, the back of the book section as we were saying it's it's very very strong and uh, you know and that the carter stories in the front thank you very much for joining in thank you so much mm -hmm.